Good morning, everyone, on this kind of gray, gray, and it was snowing this morning, morning. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, for our devotional today, I, I, well, I was inspired by the, the take-home resources from the vine. Um, the passage for today is from Ezekiel, the passage of the, the dry bones, and I thought, you know, Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll give you more of a sermon than a devotional. So um, this is a little longer of a video than we might normally have, and um, we'll just see how it goes. Uh, happy to send out the text if anybody would prefer that later on. Just let me know. Um, but first, I will, I'll, read the passage. I'll read the passage to you from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley, it was full of bones. He led me all round them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and the flesh had come upon them, and the skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole host of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Amen. And so, if you'll pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I thought I'd start with a bit of background for you, just so you know where Ezekiel's coming from with this prophecy. Uh, the people of God were in what was probably their worst spot yet in their long history as a nation. Over the years, they had basically watched everything they knew crumble right in front of them. The divided kingdoms had long since separated Israel in the north and Judah in the south. The nation of Israel had been conquered and deported, sent into exile about 200 years before, and they had faded from existence. Uh, the ten lost tribes of Israel, they came to be called. And the people of Judah, whose capital was in the city of Jerusalem, were now facing their own time of reckoning. The Babylonian Empire's plan was simple, conquer and assimilate everything. So by 600 or so BCE, they and their king, Nebuchadnezzar, had their sights set on Jerusalem. After the king of Judah stopped paying tribute to Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar sent troops who put the city to siege and eventually the king there, the king from the line of David, surrendered. He and many of the most important people in the city were taken captive to Babylon. A puppet king was put up in his place in Jerusalem. One of those important people deported was a priest by the name of Ezekiel. Ezekiel had a calling from God, a calling to preach to the people in exile, but his message hadn't been very hopeful. He had announced that the nation of Judah wouldn't stay in this puppet regime for long, that Jerusalem would be completely overrun. That soon the homeland these exiles were longing for would no longer exist. Ezekiel's message was one of judgment, of doom. Back in Jerusalem, another prophet was proclaiming the exact same message. Jeremiah, known to history as the weeping prophet, told the people to prepare to be conquered, to prepare for exile. 
Jeremiah even told them to get comfortable in exile, build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce, he told the people. This would not be a short-lived thing. Jeremiah called the king and the people to repent, to return to God, but they didn't listen. The king had Jeremiah locked up, said he was demoralizing the people. He tried to block out his words. But in the end, Jeremiah and Ezekiel's prophecies came true. The king of Babylon sent an army back to Jerusalem after Jerusalem tried to enter an alliance with Egypt. The army besieged the city. The famine became so severe that there was no food of any kind left. One night, the king of Jerusalem tried to flee with his army. They were overtaken by the Babylonians, captured, and the king and his men were taken into exile in chains. The army of Babylon entered the city of Jerusalem, set fire to the temple, burned down the palace and all the important buildings. The walls of Jerusalem were torn down. All the people were taken into exile, with only a few of the poorest left to work in the fields. And so, in the year 586 BCE, the nation of Judah fell. Back in Babylon, the exiles from the first wave of deportations received the news that Ezekiel's prophecies had come true. They must have felt utterly hopeless. Not only was their homeland conquered and destroyed, but the very symbols of what made them a people had been torn down. Jerusalem torn down, the temple burned to the ground, their kings, that promise of a ruler from the line of David who would save them, all gone. They must have felt completely abandoned, or worse, like their god was powerless against the stronger forces of Babylon. Psalm 137 was written in those days. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? In the midst of this despair, Ezekiel had a new vision. He was swept up in the spirit and taken to a valley, a valley filled with dry and dusty bones, scattered remains of a long dead army. I'm always reminded of that scene in The Lion King, the elephant graveyard, a dark pit full of bleached bones, a frightful sight. But as Ezekiel looked out over this desolation, he heard the Lord speak. Mortal, God said, can these bones live? Wisely, Ezekiel replied, O oh Lord God, you know. And God responded, Prophesy to these bones. Say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. And as Ezekiel proclaimed this message to the valley of dry bones, there was suddenly, suddenly a rattling, a clacking, as bone found bone, like the old gospel song, foot bone to leg bone to hip bone, and so on, as each bone found what was long lost and separated and repaired it bit by bit. Sinews and muscles wove themselves on these bones, and they were covered with skin, so that an entire army, a multitude, stood standing there before Ezekiel. But there was still no breath in them. They were still not alive. And God told Ezekiel, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And Ezekiel did and the winds came, the spirit of God, that spirit that had breathed life into the first humans in ages past, that breath of God filled the valley flowed into each body and brought life to what was once dry and dead. And God said to Ezekiel, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord, I am going to open your graves and bring you up, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act. One of the most interesting things to have come out of this whole quarantine situation are the memes, those little sayings that go around on the internet. And I was reading one the other day on Facebook. It said something like, 
This is the lentiest Lent I've ever Lented. And it makes sense. Lent is traditionally a time of waiting, of cutting back, of stripping bare, a time of longing, of expectation, and in-between time. And aren't we all feeling that in-between time more now than ever? Our lives often hold those kind of seasons as well, times when God may seem far off or non-existent, times when we can't seem to figure out why we or the people we love have been through what they've been through, times when we feel like we're in an endless night, like all hope is lost, when we feel like life has been put away, like we're living in exile. Our churches go through these seasons, even in normal times, Times when walking through the doors can feel like a struggle, when everything feels pointless, when tension and division might run rampant. Our communities, our nations, our world, they certainly face those days too. Times we've seen so much of lately. Times when it feels like everything is in chaos, when it's all falling apart. When we find ourselves wondering if these dry and scattered bones of what once were will ever find a new life. It's in these times that we can most understand that question from God to Ezekiel. Mortal, can these bones live? And we hear that God has already given us the answer. No matter how broken, no matter how separated, no matter how bare and dry and decimated, God has promised to pull the pieces back together, bit by bit. But Ezekiel's vision also shows us more. It's not simply the building back up, the joining back to what once was that brings life, that life is found in God's spirit. Jesus himself gave us a promise long after Ezekiel had seen his vision, a promise that there would be someone, an advocate who would follow him, that God's Holy Spirit would come into the lives of those who followed him, would come into the world, bringing labor pains of new birth, bringing the rattling, crackling sound of dry bones coming back to life. That spirit promised to us as to the people long ago, a promise that God who sometimes seems so far away, who we perhaps feel so separated, cut off from, in exile from, the spirit, God, is actually as close as our very breath, breath. Spirit, two meanings from the same word in Hebrew. God's breath is God's spirit, is our source of life, here with us. No matter if we're gathered together as thousands in a grand sanctuary, or as families in a quiet chapel, or as friends in a simple room, or even on our own, hidden away from the rest of the world in our homes. Each and every moment, the spirit, God's spirit, is with us, just ready to pull those dry bones back together as soon as the time is right. And we might wonder how we can feel that spirit, feel that breath. Ezekiel's vision can give us another answer. Prophesy to the breath, God told him. Call upon it, call upon God's spirit. Invite the spirit to come in, to come and fill our nation, to fill our church, to fill our homes and our lives with that fresh, new, revitalized life that guides and shapes us to live only for God. And we can find that spirit in so many ways, even now, by singing praises to God, by reading God's word together or alone in quiet, in the joys of talking with friends and family, by meditating on God's blessings in nature, by finding inspiration through art or creativity, we have all the time we need to listen, to pray, to invite the Spirit into our lives. And we, like the people of Israel in exile long ago, like Jesus' disciples facing the road to the cross, we will see that renewal. We will see that resurrection. We will see that new life. And so for each of us, as we face these days of separation and fear and grief and loneliness, may that vision, that promise sustain us as it did the people of Israel through that time of exile until they did eventually return to the promised land. 
May the promise and the presence of God's Holy Spirit be with us, shape us, bring us to new life now and always. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And take care.